Welcome to Eat Smoke Drink. It's another episode of Eat Smoke Drink. Today I am going to be reviewing something that's familiar to most people. The Freud 10 is something that you will see in duty free stores, liquor stores, every online shop. The Freud 10, the Freud 10, the Freud 10. I, I have conversations with people and I ask them, what kind of whiskey do you like? And I say, oh, the Freud 10. And I'm like, have you ever tried many other peated whiskeys? Or are you just saying the Freud 10 because it's the only thing you've been given in the bar while you were half shit-faced um, and not knowing what you were drinking and you thought oh you like Lafroy 10 um, because that's probably the reason because most people probably don't like Lafroy 10 to be completely frank it is a very polarizing whiskey I find it to be a little bit borderline and offensive um, but today I'm reviewing the Lafroy 10 cast strength the normal ones you get is about 40% this is a 56.3% bottling naturally cast strength um, and this is the batch 7 it was actually released in 2015 but I'm just doing this review to highlight to you the difference between higher ABV. You get some people out there saying, oh, you know, you need to water down your whiskey to 35%. Okay, you know what? Maybe when you're blending and you're tasting in the warehouse um, and, you know, you're tasting 100 whiskeys, maybe you do. I disagree with it. I think that alcohol bridges the gap between certain flavors and sensations. Okay? Just like when you're eating curry, you need rice with it. Only an animal eats curry without rice or bread. Okay, you need that carb to get that to get that thing going. Um, you know that, that that combination, and that's the alcohol and flavors and phenols of a whiskey. Sometimes you need the extra alcohol, and when you water it down too much, then you start to make those gaps bigger, and maybe you can taste a little bit more. But that's not always a good thing. Tasting individual flavors by themselves is not always a good thing. Sometimes tasting flavors together as a whole, as a combination, is the, 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 what makes or breaks a whiskey or food or any flavor, right? So today, 56.3, let's get nose in. Look, you can't deny it. From the get-go, peat, boom, in the face. It hits you in the face. That peat is unmistakable. The peat, unmistakable. I mean, yeah, it's 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 burning bogwood from the beach, burning leaves, twigs, seaweed on the beach, burning sand, the ocean spray, heavy iodine, licorice, ginger. It smells like cow manure. Yes, you heard me right. It smells like you know when you're walking through a paddock with sheep and cows and you smell a bit of that methane from cow and sheep shit. You get a little bit of that as well. Some people actually say. Um, they call it barnyard smells, but let's not let's not let's not sugarcoat it. It smells like barnyard poops, but in a good way. Okay, I'm not saying it's a bad way, but it does have that stench of the barnyard smell, that organic, heavy, heavy organic matter. Oh, a smoke, full on smoke. I'm getting a bit of fruit. I'm getting a bit of jam, orange marmalade. A bit of white pepper, a bit of ginger. Now let's uh, let's give a sniff to the one with water. Okay, so with water, the smell of the peat does subside a little bit. The ginger and the white pepper comes through a bit more. I'm getting grass, freshly cut grass. Literally, the mower's right beside me, cutting grass, and I can smell that. I'm getting a bit of hay fever over here. But it smells pleasant. Both smells pleasant. I'm still getting that barnyard smell, but let's say manure. Hmm. Condensed fruit still there, not much change there. The only change is the peat hit on the nose is not as great. And I'm getting a little bit more of that jammy condensed fruit marmalade. I think I'm getting a bit more brown sugar burnt brown sugar you can't deny the burn because it smells very burnt you're still heavy iodine you're still heavy in salinity heavy in organic matter I mean li literally you can close your eyes and just imagine you're on a beach having a bonfire it's like that and it smells like bandage glue you can't forget the bandage glue you know leucoplast or you know um tape the bandage glue you're, you're definitely getting that let's taste it Mm. 
Mm. So very medicinal. Very medicinal. Not sure if you've seen my other Lafroy videos, but I will link you a link above of the other Lafroigs that I've got. But true story, well, according to the internet sphere, when the US prohibition was actually on, um, Lafroy was allowed to enter the country and sold in pharmacies because the authorities thought, who the F would drink this? Who would drink this? This is not something that you would voluntarily imbibe with. So they thought it was medicine. They actually thought it was medicine. And so, yes, it is very medicinal. It is crossed between whiskey and Benadryl. You get that burnt taste in your mouth that just lingers and lingers. It is super oily, super heavy. Burnt rubber, fresh rubber, gum boot. It smells like a dystopian future where things are just burning everywhere. Um, very salty, iodine -y, slight bitter taste. Not too much sweetness to it. I can taste a little bit of a coconut in the back end, it's probably from a Berber influence at some point. Um, but what I do like about the Cast Strength Lafroig, and that's why I will encourage you to get the Cast Strength Lafroig, even if you pay a little bit more, is the flavor is much more integrated. So you are tasting the peat, but it's integrated with all the other flavors. And that's what I mean by the bridge. The alcohol does that. If you water it down too much, you lose that. And then all you can do is you drink it and you go, mmm, sweetness, mmm, peat, mmm, bitterness. And it's all individual flavors. With this, it's like a melody of flavors and it's actually very nice and it's a very pleasurable drink with water. See, with water, I can taste things in sharp hits. I tasted rubber, sharp hit, it drops down. And then I can taste burning rubber, sharp hit, drops down. And then I can taste burning leaf litter and wood on a beach goes back and drops down and I can taste just sooty, ashy, and then sweetness and it all just goes up and down and it's like a roller coaster in your mouth and it can get quite confusing. It's not that pleasurable with water and that's not even that much water. So when you put it to 40%, what are you drinking? You know, this is, this is why I'm such a big fan of cast strength and high ABV. So I would say right now, I will do no water on this drink it at its absolute finest straight out of the barrel and um this could be a session whiskey if you drank it by itself it's actually not that it's 56 but surprisingly mellow in, in potency the flavor and complexity is through the roof though but you know i'll take it back the, the complexity isn't it's a hard one because it is quite a complex flavor but all the flavor is in a narrow band and it's just a lot of it right it's wood smoke fire salt ocean um, that's really what you're getting there a bit of tannin but i would say don't water this down they release this quite frequently this is an american release but you can get them around the world um, if you look hard enough um, i would say if you like your lafroix 10 lafroix 10s this is going to be a better one than a standard lafroix 10 and if you don't like it you can always water it down to your tasting anyway and then it goes even further but I think that this is a, a good example of what these big multinationals, these big multinationals, they will make um, alcohol and they will condition the population's palate to drink at 40% or less, put ice in it or whatnot. Blasphemy. And so the reason why they do that is because they want to condition your palate so you drink more of less. Okay, does that make sense? You drink more of what they give you, which is less, but actually, in the whiskey journey, you should aim to drink less of more. So that's really what I strive to do. And this is what I'm starting to achieve is I'd rather have two drams of something a little bit more potent than four or five drams of something that's just kind of like whiskey water, really. Cigar pairings, this is a tough one. Such a hit in the face and flavor. It's very complex, it's in your face. There's no illusions about it. It's a strong, strong flavored whiskey. So most cigars you're gonna have is gonna drown. Okay, um, so it depends on where you want to go again. Do you want to balance it out with a mild cigar? Do you want to, um, you know, have a mild cigar and just taper it off? Or do you want to go all out? Like Vegas, go big or go home. Then you go, you get yourself a smoky Maduro, a sweet, sweet triple Maduro, something like a Camacho, 
um, something that'll just wallop you in the face and you get two wallops in the face and then you can just go comatose and have a hangover. So it depends on what you like to do. I would say go for gold uh, for the Lafroy 10 car strength. Thank you very much for joining me today and um, I hope you um, enjoyed this particular take on the Lafroy 10 car strength. If you have any questions, please ask. I would love to answer them. What are your thoughts on the car strength versus the distillery bottlings? Let me know and see you again until next time.